Hallelujah. Just walking up this hill this morning and I heard this, this great sound, terrifying sound. It's crack and then it's crashing. It's a great tree. It's fallen down. Great tree. Probably stood for hundreds of years. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> it might be in the woods, so I can't see it, but it, it was so terrifying. The noise. Such a noise. Such a great noise. And the word of the Lord came to me suddenly. It was the same word he gave me back in 2018. That the Lord has come to visit his people. He's come to visit his church. He's come to visit us. To see what's in our hearts. To see whether we will go on with him or not. And sometimes he has to take away. Sometimes he has to, to shake us up. And to allow troubles to come. To try our hearts. To try our hearts. Yes, the Lord has come to try us. He said in Malachi chapter 3 verse 1, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come. But listen to this. But who shall abide the day of his coming? And who will stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire, and like the fuller's soap, and shall sit as a purifier of gold and silver, and shall thoroughly purge the sons of Levi, that they may offer up an offering in righteousness. You know, we want the Lord to visit us. We want a visitation from God. Do you know what it's like to have a visitation from God? Moments when God suddenly is revealed to you. You're suddenly aware of, of his presence. Just a sudden glimpse of his glory. And I tell you, just that glimpse of him and you're left paralyzed, motionless, utterly consumed by his holiness, utterly aware of your sins, utterly aware of your weakness, completely and utterly aware of yourself in his presence because his light shines into the darkness and we become aware of our utter need for him. Yeah, we become aware We are not right before him. And we thought we were right. We thought we were so holy. We thought we were doing really well until we met with God. And we realized that all our righteousness is but filthy rags before him. None of us are good enough. None of us are good enough to stand before God. He is a consuming fire. The mountains flow like wax at the presence of the Lord. The seas part when his voice is uttered. Oh, for a visitation of the Lord. Change us, Lord. We love him because he first loved us. What a wonderful saviour we have. Because he makes us right before him. Because he paid the price for our sins. There is no sacrifice we can make that can make us right before God. What could a man give for the redemption of his soul? says the redemption of our souls is precious and there is no price we can pay to pay the price of our sins that price can only be paid by God 
And it can only be a lamb that God chooses. It can only be the blood that God chooses, not us. We are forgiven not on our terms, but on God's terms alone. And he did pay the price. His precious blood of his son, Jesus Christ, shed for us. Hallelujah. My vision, it wasn't a vision, it was a real, a real experience where the wind came down from on high and shook the tree so violently and I hid because I was scared. And just prior to that, the voice of God came to me and said, Alex, I'm about to shake the foundations of religiosity in my people. This shaking has begun, my friends, it's begun. Behold the wind of God. Behold the shaking of the Lord. To shake that, shake all that shakeable so that which is unshakable may remain. So that we may go forth for the Lord. No hidden agendas. No, no other agendas but to serve him. And where is this tree? <laughs> it's so loud, I thought it was right near me. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good morning, folks. Get alone with the Lord and have time with him. Draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. Amen. Hehehe. <laughs>